This video was brought to you by my patrons. Thank you so much for your support. Hello there. So I was studying some object oriented design and I faced some techniques and some terminologies that I'd like to share with you, but not as a tutorial. I just want to raise the discussion about using these object oriented design terminologies and techniques in Godot engine. So let's start by talking about aggregation. A very short description of aggregation is that it is a subset of association. So it implies that one object of one class owns an object of another class. But here in aggregation we have a subtle difference because it is a specific subset of association and it implies a relationship where the child, the object that one class owns, can exist independently from the parent class. So let's try to understand this better using Godot Engine. Here in Godot, one of the clearest examples that I can think about is the relationship between nodes and resources. So if we go here in the help classes, we can see that we have node that inherits from object and we also have resource that inherits from reference. Some nodes, uh, most of the nodes, use resources in order to perform its behavior. So for instance, let's add a sprite here. A sprite can use a texture, right? So let's go here, we have the Godot icon here, and you can see that Godot icon, this uh, texture here, is a stream texture. So help classes stream texture, and it inherits from texture, which inherits from resource. Uh, if we drag and drop this resource here, now we have a sprite that aggregates a texture, that aggregates a stream texture. So this is the clearest example that I can think about. Uh, another one is, let's say, a animation player. So if we create a new animation here, let's just say spin. And if we save it to the disk, here we have the spin animation. And if you go here in help classes animation, we'll see that an animation is also a resource and that the animation player is a node. So the animation player uses, it aggregates an animation. So this list of animations that we have here is an aggregation of animations in the animation player. So the animation player has a relationship of aggregation with many animations. And the reason why I think that this is a aggregation relationship, so the sprite aggregate a texture and the animation player aggregates some animations, is that in aggregation, the child is independent from the parent. So they don't have a hard ownership between each other. They don't have a hard ownership relation between each other. So let's see if we can try to prove that. I will create a node here and I will add a script, so I will name this just test. And let's drag and drop the sprite as a child. And what we'll do here is that I will create a var texture. And on the ready function, on the ready callback, I will say that the texture will be the sprite dot texture. And then I will queue free the sprite, queue free. And here in the process callback, we will try to access this uh, texture. So let's try to print the texture here. And the reason why I'm doing this is because in aggregation, the parent and the child doesn't have a hard ownership relation. So we can delete the parent, which in this case is the sprite, and we we'll still have access to the child, in this case, the texture. If everything goes well, we'll have the texture printed here. So test it. And here we have it. So we have access to the texture, even though the sprite is not available anymore. It was freed from memory. The next example, and this one is not on me because I see a lot of people talking about this in the forums, in the Discord server, the Facebook group, is that the scene tree, the way we arrange nodes in the scene tree, is also an aggregation relation. So if we add, let's say, a sprite and we add a animation player. Here we have a sprite that aggregates an animation player and if we save this, I will save this just over this, okay over white, and if we play this we have a scene tree, I will go to the remote scene tree here, 
Uh, we have a scene tree, which is also a node that aggregates a viewport, which is this root node. So you can see that it is a viewport here that aggregates a sprite that aggregates an animation player. Okay. But here's the thing. Uh, I was searching in the web for how does aggregation work and I find out I will put this link to the source in the description so you can also have access to it. But I will quote what they say in the screen right now. It's important to note that the aggregation link doesn't state in any way that class A owns class B nor that there is a parent-child relationship. But if we go here in the help classes node, we'll see that node has a parameter, a member property called owner. Very often this is just the root, so in this case, in the case of animation player, it will be the sprite but very often it can be the, the parent node of this node as well. And if we go down a little bit, we have the add child, which implies a child relationship. And we also have get parent down here. So we also have a parent child relationship. And I don't know if this is actually a aggregation relationship that we have here in the scene tree. So I would like to hear from you. And another thing that I think that proves that this is not a aggregation per se is that when we will see in the composition approach that when we use composition it implies that the child's dependent on the parent. So let's say if we free the parent we will also free the child. But here in Godot, uh, here in the scene tree, if we free the, the sprite for instance, we will also free the animation player. So this will configure a composition, not an aggregation. So to prove that, let's create another scene here. I'll add a node, drag this as its child, and create another script here. So I will call this test2, okay? And I'll save this scene as test2 as well. And I was make uh, basically the same thing. We'll have a var a on the beginning, and a will be the animation player. And then we'll free the sprite dot q free. And in the process callback, we'll try to have access to this a node here. So if they are indeed an aggregation, so if the child doesn't depend on the state of the parent, we will have access to the animation player. So let's print A here. If they have a hard relationship between each other, if they have a hard ownership between each other, we will not have access to the animation player anymore. So I will try to test this. And we have here a deleted object, so we don't have access to the animation player anymore. And I think that this this is kind of strange because I heard from very professional people that the scene tree makes use of an aggregation approach. So I don't know if this configures or not. I'll be very happy to hear from you what actually happens in the scene tree here. But for this video, this is it. If you like this kind of discussion, if you like to talk about design patterns, architectures, engineering, uh, leave a thumbs up so I know that you want more of this content. Don't forget to subscribe as well so that you know that I am producing this kind of content. By the way, let's welcome Adventures, my newest patron. Thank you so much for joining us. And for this video, that's it. I hope you enjoy it. Thank you for watching. Keep developing and until the next time.